Hello everyone, welcome back to IS Baba. This is a very very important session wherein we are going to discuss uh, UPSC mains uh, 2024 geography question paper. Now uh, this year the geography question paper was uh, quite a predictable line except one or two questions. Almost all the questions were easy direct enough and uh, most of these questions have uh, uh, their origin in the current affair. So let us uh, quickly look into each of these questions and uh, let us see what could be the solutions and why were they asked, wh what were the reason for them in the news. So let us proceed with the very first question. Here the question is what is uh, the sea surface temperature rise and uh, on the similar line uh, there was one question way back uh, in the prelims wherein UPSC had asked question on uh, OMT ocean mean temperature <clears throat> so basically OMT uh, and the sea surface temperature SST is basically used for the prediction of uh, some climatic phenomena like amount of the precipitation here in this context uh, it is related to that of tropical cyclones so it says how does it affect the formation of the tropical cyclones so this question was uh, on the predictable line because uh, uh, in 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 march uh, uh, it was there in the news in march uh, 2024 itself uh, it was uh, mentioned in the indian express also okay wherein the sea surface temperature sea surface temperature had increased to the uh, record uh, high of uh, approximately 21 uh, point uh, zero six degree celsius okay and this was a record since since 1979 so definitely it was expected that the question would be asked on this line so in this introduction you could have uh, started uh, with introducing what is uh, in the introduction you could start with what is the ssc sea surface temperature Herein, uh, a simple uh, since it is a uh, just a 150 word question, so not emphasizing too much upon the introduction and the conclusion, we could directly say that sea surface temperature, that sea surface temperature is nothing but the rise or increase in the average uh, temperature of the oceans, which has been happening over the past, uh, over the past uh, of uh, one century, over the past century and uh, it continues to rise okay and it continues to rise uh, here you could have also mentioned about ipcc intergovernmental panel uh, on climate change and their finding with respect to that of the increasing global warming okay you could have mentioned that also then directly jumping to the main body because it is the main body where your question is going to be justified so here in the main body what is the demand of the question is uh, how does it affect uh, the formation of the tropical cyclones so first of all you should be knowing what are the factors that causes uh, the uh, formation of the tropical cyclone and here you can then mention about the uh, the sea surface temperature and its effects upon the formation so as you know the tropical cyclones the tropical cyclones and here uh, you, you can mention about some of the important factors that influences the tropical cyclone one is the uh, the sea surface temperature uh, 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 more than 27 degrees celsius okay and average sea surface temperature more than 27 degrees celsius okay uh, other factors that influences uh, the uh, cyclone is uh, the coriolis force okay which may not be emphasized too much over here then uh, uh, low pressure or you can say intensified uh, intensified low pressure system okay further uh, uh, the orientation of coast okay orientation of coast so here in this context we are understanding that uh, that that sea surface temperature is one of the most important primary factor that influences the tropical cyclone so 
so as as the sea surface temperature rises what would uh, happen in this case is the uh, convection the convection will rise convection that is vertical transfer of the heat will be rising upwards okay and uh, an intensified low pressure will be created intensified low pressure would be created it means it means an intensified cyclones would also be created okay so on one hand on one hand there is going to be an increased frequency or increased number of cyclones okay and on the other hand there is going to be uh, increased intensity increased intensity of cyclone okay <clears throat> increased intensity of the cyclone so uh, uh, further like for example you can talk about uh, some of the important uh, cyclones that have happened in the recent past for example the nisarga or the amphan or tokte okay you can mention about these cyclones amphan nisarga tokte okay further uh, what can be elaborated is uh, uh, the uh, further what can be elaborated is the change in the direction also okay the change in the direction or the motion as you know that the cyclones these tropical cyclones are under the influence of trade winds okay they are under the influence of this trade winds so here in this case uh, the uh, 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 the the uh, trade winds brings these uh, cyclones and hit in the, along the east coast of the continent hitting the east coast of the continent in this context uh, increased sea surface temperature may also affect the direction okay may affect the direction then uh, also as the intensity of the cyclone increases then it may cause increased precipitation that is the increased rainfall may happen okay so overall overall you can mention about uh, uh, how increased sea surface temperature is going to increase the numbers of the cyclone intensity of the cyclone followed by increased precipitation changes in the direction <coughs> and uh, also the overall impact of the cyclones and other climatic phenomena that gets affected in the conclusion in the conclusion since it's just a 150 word question so no need to emphasize too much upon the conclusion also but still as a cyclone is what it is a disaster it is a hazard so there needs to be a, a disaster management uh, in picture along the coastal areas along the coastal areas because uh, this is going to bring torrential rainfall that may cause flooding in the coastal area flooding okay so there is a need of uh, the mitigation of these type of the hazards along the coastal areas okay this much uh, should be the sufficient enough okay wherein you can mention about the uh, the disaster resilient infrastructure as well along the coastal areas proceeding ahead to the next question now this question uh, is basically a repeated question and uh, UPSC had asked already asked question on the cloud burst in the past in way back in the year 2016 when it was a Kedarnath uh, cloud burst okay here in this context uh, the question is very simple what is the phenomena of cloud burst explain again why this question was asked this question was asked because it was there in the news it was mentioned in the the Hindu also uh, in the case of the Himachal Pradesh Himachal Pradesh the cloud burst had uh, uh, took a toll of many lives especially in the region of uh, uh, Shimla uh, Manali okay especially the tourist places were affected okay so here also as it is just a 150 word question so just uh, one or two line of the introduction so the question is directly what is the phenomena of cloud burst explain so you can start uh, mentioning about uh, cloud burst 
now uh, that what aspect and why aspect these are two important aspects in the introduction if it is a normal uh, aspirant he would start with what he would start writing what is a cloud burst okay cloud burst <laughs> on the other hand if it is a smart student he would be starting with why cloud burst or rather <clears throat> he would directly start with the issues associated with the cloud burst indicating the current affair also within the same introduction definitely this student who is uh, giving the dynamic introduction would be uh, scoring relatively more as compared to the one who is merely mentioning uh, the cloud burst still uh, you should be ready with both the introduction like what is cloud burst cloud burst technically or you can you can explain the what aspects in the main body part also okay so in the uh, in the introduction part if you want to start with the current affair aspect you can say that the recent incident of the cloud burst in the himachal pradesh which took a toll of many lives there is no need to mention the number of deaths which took a toll of uh, many lives is a serious uh, uh, issue and this incident of the cloud burst has been increasing one of the most severe being the 2016 Uttarakhand cloud burst in Kedarnath. Okay, this much introduction will be more than sufficient. Then coming to the main body. Then explaining over here, what is a cloud burst? So since since it is a, a technical aspect, so you may mention that as per the IMD, Indian Meteorological Department, uh, cloud burst is a phenomena wherein the precipitation is exceeding more than 100 millimeter per hour over a smaller geographical area of approximately 20 to 30 square kilometer 20 to 30 square kilometer okay in a span of uh, like less than an hour okay because of this what happens is the flash flood flash flood happens okay and uh, it is associated with the disaster so in this context uh, uh, further what is uh, em emphasizing is phenomena of cloud burst so it is asking you to explain how this mechanism is happening okay so you are supposed to explain the mechanism the mechanism of cloud burst as it is asking about the mechanism so it is uh, very much uh, useful if you one can draw a diagram <laughs> since it is associated with the mainly the uh, himalayan region so you can <clears throat> draw a physiography wherein the there is this formation of the clouds and these clouds are basically the cumulonimbus clouds the cumulonimbus clouds are basically the uh, vertical towers of the clouds that is being formed okay so this type of the cloud formation wherein the warm air is rising upward okay it is blocked by this orography that is a uh, mountain and and uh, uh, th there is accumulation of these uh, uh, moisture along this uh, uh, windward side of this uh, mountain and because of this what happens is a point will come when the saturation will be taking place and all the rain will fall at once okay all the rain will fall at once covering a smaller region okay which will lead to flash flood okay downhill and uh, uh, definitely definitely taking a toll of many lives on the way so you can explain this uh, mechanism over here okay that uh, the it is basically the moisture the moisture laden air that runs uh, you know the in the hilly terrains it forms a vertical cloud and this vertical cloud the cumulonimbus i hope you remember this the cumulonimbus cloud formation takes place and these clouds are associated with the rain thunder lightning okay occurrence of this cloud is this relative uh, humidity humidity very high humidity okay relatively very high humidity is needed on the other hand uh, uh, the orography orography to prevent uh, the 
uh, horizontal escaping of these clouds okay and uh, uh, on the other hand the the wind shear uh, being relatively uh, less over here okay and uh, uh, reaching a saturation point would lead to accumulation of huge amount of this moisture along the hilly areas as a result <coughs> when the appropriate time would come it would all fall at once giving to flash giving rise to the flash flood here in this case you can mention about some examples or also examples it would be better if you give recent examples for example the himachal pradesh cloud burst in 2024 okay when in shimla mandi kullu district of himachal pradesh okay you can mention about these places shimla mandi and kullu mo mo most of these are the tourist places so heavy rainfall had uh, triggered flash floods and landslides which led to loss of life and widespread destructions similarly last year in sikkim in sikkim in 2023 in october it experienced a cloud burst and the cloud burst uh, was followed by the glacial lake outburst flood okay which again led to a massive flash flood in this region claiming over dozens of life as uh, this is also a hazard so there needs to be a disaster uh, the mitigation so geography question is no longer a purely geography one they are mainly associated with the environment and the hazards in this context uh, you do not have to write a disaster management answer but it would be better if you can uh, put one or two element of uh, the mitigation okay so mitigation could be with respect to that of uh, the proper uh, the the building codes and uh, the rules of constructions the building codes and the rules of the constructions controlling uh, uh, the illegal construction and encroachment upon the mountainous area so basically due to the construction along the hilly terrain the terrain becomes very weak and fragile and because of this uh, uh, the cloud burst and its associated problems become unprecedented so <clears throat> awareness also should be done for example way back in uh, 2016 kedarnath uh, cloud burst the awareness uh, by the imd over the radios and televisions with respect to that of uh, the possible chances of the cloud burst was also uh, made to the people and finally in the conclusion as again it is just a 150 word one or two line of conclusion should be sufficient enough that <clears throat> you can mention about the ndma guidelines that as the cloud burst or the frequency of the cloud burst is increasing almost on every year basis so the tourist places uh, which is more vulnerable to the cloud burst and its uh, uh, consequences so there should be a proper uh, uh, mitigation measures at its place because it is this place where there are more number of people in this context and dma guidelines will be useful so that should be sufficient enough proceeding ahead to the next question now now this question is also relatively quite easy the question is the ground water potential of the gangetic valley is on the serious decline how may it affect the food security of india so it is an interrelated question uh the ground water and uh, its impact upon that of the food security it is a 250 word question so here in the introduction now uh, let me tell you that this question is also current affair oriented the central ground water authority uh, way back in the march april had come up with this uh, the ground water report okay wherein it had uh, talked about uh, Uh, the scenario where the ground water is uh, falling down also uh, in the case of the river surface water the surface water had also fallen down to a unprecedented level in many of the indian 
rivers flowing in the east way back in the year 2019 niti ayog had also come up uh, with the ground water assessment and uh, since then since then uh, uh, since then the uh, these uh, organizations had been emphasizing upon the intensity of the problems of the ground water and its associated problems so in the context of the introduction what you can do is you can simply start by mentioning about the central ground water authority authority uh, its report its findings with respect to that of uh, uh, uh the march april ground water report of 2024 or you can also if uh, you want to go back a little bit uh, behind you can also talk about uh, the niti ayog 2019 report and its findings accordingly okay proceeding ahead now in the main body In the main body what could be mentioned is the groundwater potential of the gangetic valley now what is the reason that is what is the reason that uh, this groundwater uh, is declining to such a great level okay <clears throat> so since first half of the question is talking about the groundwater potential of gangetic valley is on the serious in decline so mention about a re reason a reason for decline in the in ground water potential ground water potential of gangetic valley okay reason for the decline in the ground water potential of the gangetic valley here in this context uh, there are several reason one of the main important reason is uh, the agriculture approximately or uh, uh, more than you can mention that more than 90% of the groundwater groundwater table is uh, uh, groundwater is basically utilized for irrigation purpose which is uh, which is the highest in the case of this world anywhere in the world any any country then uh, the remaining 10% okay and uh, in that uh, the industries industries less than 5% the remaining is consumed uh, for the domestic purpose so this groundwater utilization is for the industrial purpose within that the thermal power plant is one of the largest consumer then uh, another reason is the uh climate change climate change is causing melting of glaciers okay. melting of the glaciers at the faster rate melting of the glaciers is causing flood river flooding and subsequently when the glaciers are melted out okay in future okay so in the short run it is causing the flooding but in the long run take okay, that is in the future uh this is causing this decline in the river water that is surface water has fallen down when the surface water has fallen down there will be fall in the ground water table also okay <clears throat> subsequently subsequently the uh, population rise population because of this increase in the population there is an increase in the demand for this water for several activities also you can mention about uh, the pollution pollution is very very important threat in spite of the availability of the water the polluted water is not fit for the consumptions okay further further uh, pollution you can also mention about uh, the nitrate pollution nitrate pollution then uh, as as the ground uh, the breaking of the aquifers can also be one of the reasons breaking of aquifers as a ground water table is falling down so what is happening is uh, 
uh, in order to fetch water from the deeper depth the tube wells are being dug to a very very deeper level because of that the aquifers are being broken down aquifers being the natural storage for the ground water if this aquifers is broken down then even if the water percolates down from the uh, percolates down so as the water percolates down what will happen is the water will not be able to be stored below so bottom runoff will take place bottom runoff will take place a very very important reason for this is also the deforestation the deforestation as uh, the forest is being cut down so the water is also running from the surface so surface runoff is taking place okay the surface runoff is taking place so in this context there are several uh, reasons and uh, the government policies inefficient government policies inefficient government policy now, there are government policies for example post 2019 the the government policy the atal bhujal yojana was there in picture but uh, inefficient water management poor irrigation practices lack of conservation had led to such a vast level of problem another part of the question is uh, we are supposed to link it how it may affect the food security in india so you can mention about the impact impact on the food security impact on food security as as uh, we know that uh, uh, irrigation mainly dependent upon the groundwater so if the groundwater is not there no irrigation when irrigation is uh, not there then definitely the uh, food productivity the food production the food production food productivity is going to fall down at unprecedented level then uh, we have water intensive crops like uh, rice then uh, sugar cane in the uh, indo-gangatic valley region this rice sugar cane you take wheat okay you take cotton these are grown on a very large scale in these regions so definitely there is going to be fall in the uh, productivity of these crops it may also happen that there could be shift there could be shift from this food crops food crops or basically the cereals cereals to that of uh, millets which is no doubt would be the advantageous one but over a short span of time if it happens it could be detrimental for the farmers as shifting may not be taking place overnight then uh, uh, if the food productivity is declining if the food productivity is declining then certainly it is going to affect the food uh, the uh, uh, um, uh, the uh, buffer stock buffer stocks okay and with that the national food security act of 2013 that would also be affected okay which is directly going to affect uh, uh, two third of the citizens okay uh, all, already the india india's uh, uh, like food security index is very poor with respect to that of 2023 or 2024 report you take india is performing very poor in the food security index in this context uh, this uh, uh, impact on the food security is going to cause more malnourishment uh, and uh, undernourishment in india it is also going to impact the land uh, fertility it is also going to impact the land fertility as no water uh, vegetation will not be able to grow salinity or uh, other problems like alkalinity may be impacting okay and this region may start becoming somewhat similar to that of the west of the india which is facing a similar problem since the green revolution so in this context what could be the solution so si since it is a 250 word uh, question so there is a huge scope of uh, giving uh, solutions also so here you may give solutions 30 40 words of solution should be sufficient enough 
so you can mention about the sustainable agriculture practices okay <clears throat> wherein emphasizing more on uh, uh, the uh, micro irrigations than the less water intensive crops less water intensive crops changing the consumption patterns okay then the ground water recharge programs for example atal bhujal yojana should be implemented in letter and spirit okay and likewise there are several initiatives by the different uh, state governments and the different ngos and uh, there are uh, uh, several uh, community based participations also wherein uh, the artificial ponds the artificial ponds are created to recharge the groundwater and uh, this not only serves as the uh, source of this irrigation but also fishing horticulture to feed the cattle okay and uh, also for their own requirement okay in this context the government intervention uh, can be very very useful so now proceeding to the next question now this question says what are aurora australis and aurora borealis how are these triggered very simple straightforward question 250 words now here in this case so uh, you must have studied about this in the solar system chapter okay so with respect to the aurora australis and borealis this is basically the glowing phenomena uh, in the north and the south poles so here with respect to that of the introduction you can you can mention about uh, what is uh, these two so they are nothing but the northern lights they are nothing but the northern lights or the aurora borealis okay uh, since uh, it is also happening in the southern hemisphere so it can also be called as the southern lights okay so northern lights yeah fair southern lights which is in the uh australis which we consider as aurora australis so these are nothing but the uh, beautiful dancing ribbons of these lights that have captivated people of the since a very long time so this is basically the basically the lights or the glowing of the sky in the north and south poles north and south poles due to north in the south pole due to the uh, due to the interaction of or interference of uh, the sun's sun's uh, charged particles with with uh, the earth's upper atmosphere especially the ionosphere okay <clears throat> further in, uh, here in the case of the main body on the main body <clears throat> so main body over here you can explain the mechanism how does it uh, happens and since uh, it is a 250 word question so you have a scope of drawing a diagram also a very uh, simple or you can elaborate uh, elaborate it also can consider this as earth just draw a sun the solar radiations okay then the earth magnetic field the earth's magnetic field okay and uh, this glowing phenomena this uh, glowing phenomena <coughs> here in the northern region and in the southern region okay these glowing phenomena wherein the 
solar radiation is interacting with the upper atmosphere of that of the earth okay so this phenomena that can be simply mentioned okay this could be simple enough okay wherein in the north it is aurora borealis and in the south it is aurora australis so here uh, you can explain the phenomena okay how does this phenomena happens basically so you can simply mention that the, these lights are created when the charge particles is created when the charge particles from that of the sun it interacts with the earth's upper atmosphere earth's upper at atmosphere uh, at a relatively very very high speed but the earth's uh, magnetic uh, field it protect us uh, from uh, the huge impact of uh, these radiations so the earth's magnetic fields so what does the earth's magnetic field do <coughs> the earth's magnetic field it directs these charge particles charge particles towards pole okay towards pole this could be the north or it could be south so accordingly there is a northern light and there is a southern light so this dramatic uh, uh, process transform this uh, atmospheric phenomena and uh, because of this uh, a fascinating fascinating colorful phenomena happens in the sky the sun is uh, ejecting the particles from its corona okay from the upper atmosphere which creates what these are nothing but the solar winds the <coughs> solar winds and uh, this winds that uh, interacts with the earth's ionosphere ionosphere in the upper atmosphere in the northern hemisphere this phenomena is called as borealis southern hemisphere australis so these particles are deflected uh, because of this magnetic field and there is a chemical reaction that is taking place okay there is a chemical reaction that is taking place so what is this uh, chemical reaction it is basically the hydrogen or the molecules of this carbon dioxide and absorbs and radiates its own unique set of uh, the colors okay which is uh, uh, which is very similar to how every human being has a unique you know set of this uh, fingerprint so this bright colors is basically the chemical compositions reduced there this red color is mainly produced by this nitrogen molecules whereas the green color is mainly produced by the oxygen molecules hydrogen and the carbon dioxide also produces the colorful phenomena like that of uh, the bluish or the orange etc so <clears throat> there are several factors that influences this it's not uniform so there are several factors one of the important factor is uh, how much amount of this radiation is coming out from that of the sun basically the input from the sun <laughs> then uh, its response the earth's response with respect to the upper atmosphere the third is the motion of the planets as uh, the planets constantly rotate and they revolve and uh, it also depends upon the what type of the particle that is being injected out okay so all of these collectively influences the formation the shapes it affects the formation shapes motions etc as these are mainly confined in the north and the south pole so from the tropic and the subtropical region it is very difficult to observe them okay but uh, at times it had uh, uh, hap uh, it had come in the news also that the uh, aurora phenomena was also evident along the equatorial region okay and it is mainly because of this that uh, this question was put up with respect to the conclusion conclusion as being a 250 word question so in the conclusion you can uh, say that uh, this aurora tells a lot about that of the earth earth especially what the earth's 
upper atmosphere its uh, its uh, uh, density or the compositions what are the compositions the flow speed the strength of the electrical signals these in turn tells us about uh, the earth's magnetic field okay and how it extends into space and how it changes dynamically and all of this is very very important for protecting the earth and space bound technologies from the hazard of space weather of which aurora is one of the part okay so in this context uh, this phenomena rather tells us more about uh, the earth's atmosphere okay and in the future since uh, the space program is going to become more and more constant space walk and the space tourism is going to increase understanding this would be advantageous in the long run proceeding ahead to the next question now here the question is what is a twister what are the why are the majority of the twisters observed in areas around gulf of mexico in any question if any specific region is mentioned it is important that one should draw a world map okay so here in this case introduction part <clears throat> uh, again it is uh, uh, it was there in the news in the recent past also as uh, there were many numbers of the twisters in this gulf of mexico region so it made into into the news and finally into the upsc question paper so what is a twister twister is uh, nothing but uh, basically a tornado tornado so which is uh, somewhat similar to that of uh, the cyclones but it is uh, uh, formed over that of the land so here in the introduction we can mention about that a twister is a violent wind storm wind storm which is often to land based which is often land based and which is characterized by a characterized by a twisting funnel shaped clouds it is characterized by twisting funnel shaped clouds uh usually as it has mentioned the gulf of mexico so usually uh it hits the east coast of that of this gulf of this mexico and there had been more than 1000 uh, such uh, twisters in last 30 years in these regions so basically the recent uh, uh, you know the incidents wherein there were more number of uh, the twisters in this region what are the reasons so we can elaborate that in the main body and here in the main body a diagram can be drawn with respect to that of this gulf of mexico here in this case as uh, as you can see the gulf of uh, the mexico so here this this uh, gulf of mexico part so here there is this uh, mississippi river and there is a vast plain in this region like there is a vast plains in this uh, region okay there is a there is this okay uh, there are other factors also mississippi rivers which provides fresh water because of which the salinity is relatively less okay and uh, some more factors let us emphasize upon that so first of all uh, we had understood that it is nothing but the tornado and uh, if more can be elaborated so it is something like this it appears as if there is a funnel that is coming down from the cloud okay and uh, and it is engulfing everything within it okay so it looks something like this okay tornado which is 
land based and if the same happens in the water it is called as a water sprouts okay water sprout so what are the factors or what are the causes in this so in each of these questions as you can see they have asked you to explain or elaborate so basically they're asking for these geographical phenomena like for example we saw the case of this cloud burst or we saw the case of the auroras so these are basically the geographical phenomena and in such type of the question it is always important that you should be mentioning about the factors that is causing that phenomena to occur as the uh, the uh, main focus area is gulf of mexico so we need to mention about what are the factors in this region that is emphasizing the formation so first is the geographical terrain the terrain in this region is that it is the relatively flat terrain there is great plains mississippi river is also there mississippi river because of this what happens is as uh, uh, a second so if i have to mention then it is also basically in the subtropics in the subtropical region as it is in the subtropical subtropical region so here in this case so, uh, it is relatively hot okay so combining these factors the flat plain region mississippi rivers and in the subtropical region this region becomes relatively quite hot because of this because of this the convection takes place convection takes place and the warm air rises upwards okay creating a pockets of so these uh, hot air rising upwards as the surface becomes hot the air above that becomes hot and these uh, hot air rises upwards second uh, factor if i have to emphasize it is the rockies it is in the leeward side leeward side and because of that what happens is the air is again relatively warm here in this region sinking air mass becomes relatively warm there is this presence of hot humid air also especially from the westerlies from the west coast uh, to that of the gulf of mexico so there is this hot humid air carried by that of westerlies on the other hand there is this presence of uh, the cold or dry air which is incoming of the cooler air from the upper uh, great plains and that of the canada so in these regions these relatively cooler dry air also comes in this region and because of this it increases the humidity okay it increases the humidity so so because of all of these uh, factors collectively working in this region this uh, region is also extensively covered with the vegetations and because of that what happens is the heavy downpour takes place the heavy downpour and hailstorms takes place heavy downpour and hailstorm takes place because of all of these factors the extent of uh, all of these leads to an extensive increased frequency or increased number of uh, twisters in these regions okay so these factors can be very well explained over here again as it is uh, hazard so in the conclusion the same can be mentioned with respect to that of uh, uh, the hazard so hazard since it is the subtropical region so hazard management along the coastal area along the coastal areas or along this uh, gulf of this mexico region should be taken into the consideration okay because it is very very violent as we had already mentioned that it is a wind storm and this is quite violent in nature it is a wind storm and it is very violent in nature so because of this there could be very high increased frequency of the 
disaster also in this region in this context uh, taking care of uh, the mitigation is one of the most important aspect of the overall disaster management in this context this answer can be very well written okay so here are these uh, some important questions which uh, UPSC had asked and almost all these questions had some relevance in the current affair almost all these questions were very very simple straightforward and could have been attempted okay without leaving even a single question so i hope uh, this was useful to you all thank you